Hello, welcome to this video introducing triple integrals in spherical coordinates. In the previous four videos, we looked at triple integrals in cylindrical. Also, we looked at triple integrals in Cartesian. So now we see that there is a third 3D coordinate system that is often used for triple integrals, and its name is called spherical. Why? What is that about? Well, First off, there is going to be three different coordinates, just like uh, in X, Y, Z, and R, theta, Z, for cylindrical. We have spherical is going to have three, all Greek letters here. The theta is familiar to you. It is the same theta that was in polar or in cylindrical, theta. Um, but then these other two are new. They're related to what we did before. The first one looks like a P, and the Greek letter there is called Rho. It represents the radial distance outward from the origin in three space. The picture is deceiving here. I want you to know that the Rho is the distance that is the radial distance outward, okay, from the origin in three space. Okay, it's kind of re reminiscent to R, which was the radial distance outward in the XY plane. All right, and so then uh, theta is what you know it to be. It is the angle that you make with the positive x-axis. Positive angle is going counterclockwise. But there's a new angle, and that angle is reminiscent to the theta. If theta is the angle that you make with the positive x-axis, this new angle is called phi, P-H-I. It's called phi. It is the angle that you make with the positive z-axis. I like to call it the hammer down or or chop or tomahawk. I don't know how to say it. Uh, it's the angle that you come down from the positive z axis. Okay. Um, when it comes to phi, however, you can't have all of it as a, a full revolution for theta that you can have zero to two pi. When it comes to phi, the maximum phi could be is when you're at the negative z-axis. You start at the positive z-axis. That's going to be uh, phi equals zero. And then you're going to increase phi. When phi is 90, you've come down from the positive z-axis, 90 degrees, that puts you on the xy plane. You continue to go down past 90, and you get to um, phi equals pi. That's the negative z-axis. So phi is only between zero and pi. When it comes to theta, it's what you think, zero to two pi. Okay, so that's the introduction of these new coordinates. Now let's see their connection to our old coordinates. We have r's and thetas and z's and x's, y's and z's. x is the distance that you come uh, along the x-axis, y is the distance that you go along the y-axis, z is the distance that you go upward. R is the radial distance outward from the origin. Theta is the angle that you spin from the positive x-axis. Now we have these two new guys. Rho is the radial distance outward from the origin. Phi is the angle that you swing from the positive z-axis. How can we relate them? Well, we use triangles to help us relate them. There is a triangle. There's a couple triangles there. Um, there's a triangle that has rho, z, and r in it. Uh, let me put, let me see, maybe it's best to put Z here as well. Let's put R here as well. Okay, so you see that triangle that's there, there's two of them, and they have, uh, it's a right triangle, the legs are Z and R, hypotenuse is rho. Pythagorean theorem says, r squared plus z squared then would be equal to rho squared. Leg squared plus leg squared should be equal to hypotenuse squared. So that's a connection, r, z, and rho. But, but r squared has a connection to x and y. You know, r squared is x squared plus y squared. And so rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. When, when, when rho is a constant, that's the radial distance outward from the origin is a constant that's a sphere and that has you know the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to a constant that's a sphere centered at the origin. Let's use the other triangle to help us figure out the other connections. 
um, the you can use parallel lines and have phi be in the in the triangle that we were looking at here. But let's use the phi as it is um, in the other triangle. So we have uh, the one leg is z. That would be the adjacent leg to phi. The opposite leg to phi would be r, and then the hypotenuse is rho. All right, let's use your trick. The sine of phi, opposite over hypotenuse, r over rho. Cosine of phi, adjacent over hypotenuse, z over rho. So how can we connect r? We can then multiply both sides by rho. We get the fact that r then must be rho sine phi. Okay, we'll get back to z in a second. Um, now, you remember how x is r cosine theta? So then replace the r with rho sine phi. It's going to be a little bit strange. But instead of x equals r cosine theta, now x equals rho sine phi cosine theta. Instead of y equals r sine theta, now y equals rho sine phi sine theta. And finally, go back to the uh, triangle. If cosine phi is z over rho, then rho, um, then z equals rho cosine phi. These are your connecting equations. Now, this is such a radically new coordinate system to us that we have to go and calculate the Jacobian. We knew the Jacobian for cylindrical because it was just involving polar, and we calculated the fact that r was the amplifying factor that we had to include into our double integrals in polar. So therefore, our triple integrals in cylindrical are the same. But spherical, this is new territory. We need to calculate the Jacobian. We have the equations we need right in front of us, though. We go and calculate x is partial with rho and phi and theta, y is partial with rho and phi and theta, z is partial with rho and phi and theta, and calculate a 3 by 3 determinant. Okay, if x is rho sine phi cosine theta and y is rho sine phi sine theta and z is rho cosine phi, what is the partial of x with respect to rho? Sine phi cosine theta. What's the partial of x with respect to theta? Rho sine phi sine theta but with a negative on it. What is the partial of x with respect to phi? Rho cosine phi cosine theta. All right, you're doing great. Now let's do it for y. With respect to rho, sine phi sine theta. With respect to theta, rho sine phi, cosine theta. With respect to phi, rho cosine phi, sine theta. You're doing great. Almost done. Z's partial with respect to rho, cosine phi. Z's partial with respect to theta. I don't see any thetas. Zero. Z is partial with respect to phi, negative rho sine phi. It's a bit of a hassle. It's something that you I, I only want to do once for you. You never have to do this again. But I just need to understand, possibly, hopefully, with this, um, how to figure out what the amplifying factor is when it's time to change your variables. Um, I'll have a 3D drawing that might help as well. But yes, we have to go calculate this 3 by 3 determinant. It's a bit of a mess. These, these guys go in the position that they're in, and it's a 3 by 3 determinant. Usually, you'd be expand about the first row, but you can expand about any row or any column in a 3 by 3 determinant. Take advantage of zeros because it takes off a third of your calculation. So let's expand about the third row. Okay, what we do is we take the entry that's in that third row first column, cosine phi, cross out that column and row, and we multiply by the 2 by 2 determinant that's left over. Negative row squared, sine squared, or cosine. Negative row squared, why is that negative? Negative row cosine phi sine phi sine squared theta. Okay. So these are actually uh, opposite. Uh, the, the, the first diagonal here ends up being this guy and the second diagonal ends up being the other guy. But anyway, you get a zero for the second component and then you go to the third component here. You cross out the third row, third column entry, which is minus row sine phi. 
and you have a little two by two determinant there, that guy would be rho, sine, phi, cosine squared. That one's in the right order. Okay. And so it's cosine squared plus sine squared everywhere in this. Let's take advantage of that. Let's factor out what these guys have in common. Okay. So um, for the first term, we have a cosine squared phi on both of them. There's this cosine phi together with this guy. That'll be a cosine squared phi. And then here's another one. So cosine, cosine squared phi is going to come out. Uh, minus rho squared is going to come out. You see it there? You know what? How about sine phi? Let's have that come out. Uh, let's leave it as a rho square. All right, let's take it out. Neg a negative rho square. Negative rho square. So then what's going to happen if you take it out as a negative rho square, look at what's left. Cosine squared and sine squared plus. All right, this other guy. Uh, what do these guys have in common? A rho and a sine squared phi. Take that out together with this part here as well. That'll be uh, negative rho squared sine cubed phi. And look what you're left with. Cosine squared plus sine squared. Oh, geez, these are just ones. All right, so you take those out. These guys are just ones. Wonderful. That's a one and that's a one. Okay, okay. So then you're left with these two guys that you factored out. And you can factor out further. You'll have uh, a negative rho squared to come out and a sine phi that comes out. And watch what's left. When you take out the negative rho squared and the sine phi, you are left with cosine squared plus sine squared. This time on phi, though. So your Jacobian, once you take the absolute value around it, is rho squared sine phi. Sorry for the long drawn out explanation. I just want you to see it worked out one time. Just like you had r dr d theta, now you have rho squared sine phi, d rho d phi d theta. Okay. And if that wasn't convincing enough, hopefully this three dimensional drawing is convincing. Um, it's like a cube. Um, it's it's a a cube in spherical, a cuboid, I like to call it, where um, there's three dimensions. Right, to calculate the volume of a, of a cube, uh, a rectangular prism, there is the length, the width, and the height. Okay. Um, when it comes to the length, that's the change in rho. When it comes to the width, that's the arc there. Now, when you do an arc, it's, it's a radius times an angle. So that's rho delta phi, theta, phi. That's this part here, rho delta phi. And then we have the uh, the bottom there in blue there, the area of that base is uh, rho sine phi is the radius part, and then there's the delta theta. So rho sine phi, delta theta. So anyway, we have um, the area rho sine phi, delta theta, and then the height is rho delta phi. So basically, those guys all multiplied together are the same same thing that we got before. It is rho squared sine phi uh, d rho d phi d theta. Okay. All right, there we go. So uh, in the next video, sorry, this, this is 14 minutes long already. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll go through examples, okay? We'll have uh, maybe two to three examples of executing spherical um, triple integrals. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Nikai Remmer. Please comment down below, like and subscribe. Uh, reach out to me if you need any help. See you in the next video.